about this TSX outperformance. The Canadian stock market in May has outperformed U.S. stocks, so fitting to be having a conversation around potentially getting towards another record high on a day when the U.S. markets are closed. We're now getting awfully close to 20,000. And while there has been market optimism, we still have some big questions, uncertainty on things like inflation, the trajectory of Canada's economy. Let's get some perspective on all of that and how you should be thinking about investing going forward from legendary investor Stephen Jaroslawski. He's the founder and former chairman of Jaroslawski Fraser, and he joins us now. Nice to have you back with us. Thanks, as always, for your time. Very happy to be back, John. I know we uh, zero in on these milestones, but if I were to have said to you during the depths of the pandemic that by the end of May we'd be talking about a potential 20,000 level for the TSX, what would you have said in retrospect? I would have said that it was possible. Okay. All right. So you knew it. Maybe others didn't know. I mean, what do you make of the rally we've seen? What have been your biggest observations? Well, first of all, the earnings continue to be good. And we have a period still of high unemployment. We have governments all over the world which have either negative interest rates or very, very low interest rates. This is really a tax on the saver and makes it extremely difficult for anybody to save money by leaving it in, in the bank or buying a high quality bond. And therefore, what we have seen is that most people feel that the best investment, which is inflation proof, they think, and which will go on forever, is the house and the uh, uh, making the house more valuable by extensions and by new decks, etc. And this is probably going to continue because the housing prices are so high now that if the government, which has followed these low interest rates on a world basis, want to raise these rates, they're going to cause multiple, multiple bankruptcies in the housing market. And so with the, when I listened last night to the governor of the Bank of Japan, and when I listened at, uh, to a friend of mine in Switzerland yesterday, we both concluded that these rates are here to stay until such time that a solution has been found to raise higher interest rates without damaging the economy and sink, putting it back into the sewer. So as long as that happens, I think <coughs> We are, we're going to be okay with the stock market because there's very few alternatives. Now, what determines the inflation rate? There's a lot of talk about inflation, and we're seeing right now a resumption of shortages. In oil, there hasn't been any drilling for years. In, in lumber, all kinds of mills have closed during the last 10 years. And, they, and copper mines uh, have, have not produced much. And therefore, there was a shortage of uh, there. And all these shortages can come to a ra relatively rapid end. But the housing boom, which I mentioned to you, and which is going on probably in many, many places, will continue unless there's a change in interest rates. And at the same time, as long as we have free trade with Bangladesh, Vietnam, and China, it is very difficult for me to visualize that Canadian wages are going to go way up. Because that would be mm. uh, the only reason why I would think that the inflation is going to last beyond the time that people come to their senses and that this housing boom is going to deflate or, uh, or uh, stop in its tracks. So, therefore, I see short-term inflation unless we have such a, a trouble with China that we're going to not buy from China anymore and and dump free trade and go much more protective with tariffs. In that case, we would have a major inflation because we would be moving to Canadian wages for all our goods instead of Chinese wages, which are at a much lower price than ours. So you talked about the nature of global trade and how that impacts the inflation or, or perhaps keeps a lid on some of it. You talked about, you know, that 
that so-called Tina, there is no alternative, moving investors into the stock market, but also into the housing market. Listening to everything you said, Stephen, um, at a time when there's been a growing uh, chorus of people who feel that the Bank of Canada will raise interest rates next year, I didn't get a sense that you're feeling all that confident that they will move higher on interest rates anytime soon. Can I just get you to clarify that? Well, I might clarify it by saying that they may make noises as though they're going to, but I think that when somebody buys a two million semi-detached house in Montreal today, and uh, at say 2.4, and he puts 400,000 of his own money in, and he takes a mortgage out today at, at, at 3 percent, and probably under normal circumstances at 5. At 5 percent, he's broke, because he would have to pay about $220,000 uh, on that uh, in taxes in Canada, if he was in the top bracket, which he would be. And then on top of that, he would have a $20,000 uh, municipal tax on top, which is also worth $40 million. So he would have to earn $240 million before he even ate. And prices in, 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 in many cases, and we have certainly seen it in the housing market, gaining steam. I think uh, some people uh, have so-called FOMO, fear of missing out. Others have worries about things like the B-word bubble. Um, given everything, um, how would you go about investing right now? Would you look at you know, sectors like the oil sector that you made a reference to, or would you, you know, join those moving into the housing market? What do you think is the best way to go when it comes to using your money for investing? Well, short term, I would say that in high tech and speculative growth stocks, there, there could very well be a collapse at some point because that has been bought by the gamblers. On the other hand, there are a number of industries which are quite low. In the States, the defense industry is perfectly adequate. In, in Canada, health, and in the U.S. also, I would say that most of the big health care stocks are at reasonable prices. I would say that the oil stocks are, can, in Canada can still go up materially, because I think that all the oil nations have discovered that they make more money if the price goes up. And that also will also make for the substitution of oil, uh, have a much f a faster driveway ahead than it would otherwise if oil prices stayed very low. So those industries are still cheap. And then there are a whole bunch in an average category that I could also mention. And, and if oh. you go from the high tech and the growth now towards these other stocks, I think there's still additional money to be made there. Now, as far as investment is concerned, I have never been too overly interested in the daily stock market because I always like to buy in a panic. And in my case, I've been a great saver, and therefore I didn't have very much outflow. But I always kept 10% in cash or equivalent, and in high times would build it up maybe to 20% so that I would have 10 percent to invest in, in, in the panics. And that philosophy, if I buy the best stocks in the world, mainly non-cyclical in, in industries that would lend itself to this, like consumer durables, like uh, utilities, and there's, there's a whole slew of other stocks of this kind in the, in the liquor business, in non-cyclicals for the most part, aviation business, probably the defense business is another one in which you would find this kind of stocks. And, and you just buy the best in the world, but only from countries which have no dictatorship and which have the rule of law. You would probably receive a 7 percent or 8 percent growth in this and also a growth in dividends, because I'm a dividend investor. And what I like to see is that my dividend income goes up by, say, 7 or 8 percent a year with these stocks, well diversified in probably 50 or 60 stocks. And if I can get that and the inflation is 2.5 percent, I'm for life protected against the inflation. 
if those stocks hold up. And I would only make sure that there those stocks where the industry isn't growing anymore, that I would let those go and buy similar ones in industries that are still growing.